Are you a kettlebell beginner and you're looking for a great place to start? I got something for you. Check the first link in the description. It leads to our free kettlebell workout course that will serve you 30 days filled with kettlebell workouts. Click the link, sign up and enjoy. Grüezi miteinander, Greg Wurri von Leberstark hier. Pamela Reif recently released another workout on her YouTube channel. She's a behemoth on YouTube with almost close to 10 million subscribers. I think it's commendable, first of all, because I'm a YouTuber myself and I know what kind of hustle it takes to achieve any kind of success. And second of all, I think it's awesome that she provides value to so many people around the world to help them move. Nevertheless, there was this one particular exercise that I saw, which I'm not really a friend of. Now, you might have done this particular workout, you might have done this particular exercise, and maybe now you feel a certain sensation in your lower back. If this is the case, I'm here to help you because I believe this exercise is not a good option for anybody to do. Pamela calls this exercise the weight swing. And when you swing weights, there are certain aspects that you have to consider. First of all, a swing is a ballistic exercise that is used for power development. A ballistic exercise has to be done in a certain way or otherwise it is useless. Number two, the dumbbell variant Pamela is using is not really optimal. The center of mass and the grip of the dumbbell do not really allow for proper swing mechanics. Number three, her form reminds me of a video from Jillian Michaels to which I've reacted to one and a half years ago. The comment section coined the sue my trainer because my back is destroyed swing from her most popular wheelchair program. This is not me saying this. This was the comment section, which if you are on YouTube, you know that the comment section can be very, very inventive. Jokes aside, swinging weights like this, especially a dumbbell, can lead to the fact that you start bending your spine instead of bending your hips. Now, even though the spine is very solid, it might cause problems down the road. Number four, and this relates to number two, a kettlebell is, in my opinion, the best and only means to properly swing weights. And this brings me to my final point, which is point number five. Ballistic exercises are advanced. And this has nothing to do with Pamela per se. I just want to throw this out there. If you think about swinging kettlebells, you want to talk to a coach or somebody who knows their stuff. You can also talk to us so we can help you so that you really understand what it's all about. When you pick up a kettlebell, for a spin. Now, I'm not just here to complain. Matter of fact, I want to show you a couple of alternatives that you can do right now. Exercise number one is the dumbbell thruster. This exercise involves a bit of a ballistic element, but it can also be done statically to a certain extent. Now, the variant I'm gonna show you is with one dumbbell. You can also do it with doubles, but this is a little bit more advanced. So here we go. I grab the dumbbell on its weights. I don't grab it by the handle. Now I go down into a squat, and when I come up, I fully extend my arms overhead, and I come back down. Now, as you can see, this is a more static variant, or let's call it a more dynamic variant, where I move a little bit slower, but can also use this ballistic element that we've talked about. Variant number two is the dumbbell clean and press. This exercise again can be done ballistically or in a more static fashion. Now for this variant, I'm gonna grab two dumbbells. So I bring them in that suitcase position. Now I use power and a little bit of momentum from my hips to bring them to shoulder level. Now I can either trick press it, which will be more a dynamic or static element to that extent, or use more momentum, a more ballistic element from my uh, legs, or I can jerk it as well. So you have different variations and you can choose whether you want to be more explosive or more static. The next variant is a dumbbell snatch and here we have to be as explosive as possible and here we require the ballistic element in most cases especially if you use heavier weights so i have the dumbbell right on the floor i stand 
over the dumbbell, approximately shoulder width apart. Now I hinge, I grab the dumbbell, I'm almost in a full squat position, and now as I'm pulling it up, I want to drive from my legs, and then fixate the dumbbell overhead. And bring it back down. And as you can see, as I bring the dumbbell back down, I rack it, so to speak, because this allows me to use the ballistic element on the way up, but on the way down, it's a little bit tricky because we've talked about it, the dumbbell is not perfectly made for swinging motions, so that's why I rack it and put it back down. Technically, this is referred to as a dumbbell half snatch. Now, on this channel, we always talk about the kettlebell, hence I want to show you two additional variants that you can do with a kettlebell. And here comes the swinging motion, and you will see that the kettlebell lends itself perfectly for these motions because it dominates the ballistic space. The first exercise is the hand-to-hand -hand swing. I have the kettlebell approximately half a meter in front of me. I have a shoulder width stance. Now I grab the kettlebell with one hand, pull it between my legs, then I hip thrust the kettlebell forward, it starts flying, and once it reaches its apex, where it wants to drop again, I'm switching hands, I let gravity do its thing, wait for my arm to reconnect to my body, and then I engage in that maneuver again. Watch. Like I mentioned, the hand-to-hand -hand swing requires some basic understanding of your body, a good kinesthetic sense, and also a basic understanding of the kettlebell and the exercise per se. So that's why I wanna reaffirm the point that I made earlier, talk to a coach or talk to us, that we can really help you learn the kettlebell in a matter that it makes sense and that it improves your confidence. The second exercise is the kettlebell snatch. Now. We don't just swing the kettlebell to chest level, we now bring it overhead. So there's some pulling going on. And once the kettlebell lands in the so-called top fixation, we have to spear it. And now here's the difference to the dumbbell. Because the kettlebell lends itself so well to swinging maneuvers, we then drop it and now we engage in a full snatch. So now we let gravity do its thing, we catch it with our hips, and then we come back up. This is what it looks like. Now the snatch is highly advanced, but it has a lot of bang for your buck in it. It gives you a lot of results, but you have to understand this exercise properly. Matter of fact, you have to understand the swing first and the clean first before you jump into the snatch. Because we in the kettlebell community refer to the snatch as the king of the kettlebell exercises. So here is your next step. Number one, you have to like this video, share it with your friends, and consider subscribing if you are into kettlebells and swinging motions per se, and then you have to go watch this video. Remember when I talked about the Jillian Michaels video? You can watch it right here. I think she dubbed it the dive-through swing. Watch it and convince yourself that this exercise might really put people in a wheelchair, so please avoid it, but go watch it right now.